It's normal to be attracted to guys who aren't good for you. It's normal to date such men in hopes that they'll change, that they'll grow, that things will get better, that the power of your chemistry and love will make it all work. The problem is that it never does. Attraction is what gets you into a relationship. It's not what keeps you there. That's called compatibility. So if you keep finding yourself in relationships with attractive but incompatible guys, you need to do something different to get a different result. In today's Love You podcast, I'm gonna show you how. Stick around. I'm Evan Mark Katz, dating coach for smart, strong, successful women, and your personal trainer for love. Welcome to the Love You podcast. Keep listening to discover why you're attracted to the wrong guys and what to do about it. When we're done, I'll let you know how you could apply to Love You to create a relationship that makes you feel safe, heard, and understood. So um, before we go any further, just remember, if you find this advice to be interesting, inspiring, helpful, useful, and you want the personal touch in helping you actually achieve these goals, click on the link below, uh, fill out the application to apply to Love You, and I'll help you find the relationship that you're looking for in the next six months. All right, without further ado, the other day I was on Twitter, hell site that it is, but I follow some really interesting people on there. And there's a guy named Dr. Eli Finkel. I think he's a doctor. And I interviewed him from the Love You podcast a few years back about his wonderful book, The All or Nothing Marriage. And he tweeted out a link to a study. Right. Now, I'm admitting I am not an academic. I am a dating and relationship coach, completely self-taught, Lots of experience as a single man, as a married man, as a coach. I do not do studies. But I did read the top line synopsis of this study, so I'm here to share my knowledge with you. What this study illuminated, which he was really excited about, and in turn, I'm really excited about because it's very validating of my experiences as a dating coach, is this. This study points out that what gets you into a relationship has almost zero bearing on whether the relationship is successful and meant to last. Broken down even further, right? Take this very seriously. Attraction, chemistry, common interests, the very thing that draws you to someone has nothing to do with whether you're going to be a happy couple. It's almost completely divided, which is not to say that this stuff is bad, chemistry, common interest, da, 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 da. it's not bad. It's that it's divorced from the ultimate outcome. And it kind of makes sense when you stop and think about it. Look at your life, look at other people's lives. Think of all the people out there who've been in love and broke up. Think of all the people who have great sex but don't have a great relationship. The people who both have Catholic backgrounds and raise their kids Catholic but ultimately get divorced. The people who get along for the first three months of the relationship when everything is new, but when the smoke clears and the mask slips, they discover that they don't really work that well as a couple and break up after a year. This study, this revolutionary study, should be essentially patently obvious that what gets you into a relationship doesn't keep you there but it doesn't stop the way we go about dating. In fact, the way we go about dating now is worse than it's ever been before. Because on dating apps, it's all about looks, it's about class, it's about game, it's about speed. This is, we judge people on the tiniest things because we're comparing them side by side to hundreds of other people. So it's a race to the top in terms of looks, but almost a race to the bottom in terms of real compatibility and what makes someone a good partner. The ability for a guy to charm you on a first date or charm you via text says nothing about his ability to be a good husband. We know that. We know that intellectually, but it still doesn't stop us to rewarding the guys who are the cutest and often the most charming, funny, right? Or sometimes aggressive. And so we just keep swiping on the same people and hoping for a different result never really fathoming, why isn't this process working for me? When I coach people and we talk about that, what do I get in reply when I say, hey, maybe this methodology isn't working for you? Evan, I can't help what I'm attracted to. And I hear that. And no, attraction is a visceral response. It's not a choice. It's not logical. 
I'm not suggesting you should stop being attracted to what you're attracted to. What I can suggest is that we shouldn't be such a slave to that attraction and think that attraction in and of itself means something. Now, you can't have a relationship that doesn't have attraction, chemistry, or good sex. You, that's not a good relationship. That's not what I'm advocating for. What I'm advocating is that those things don't necessarily portend a good relationship. So I use a metaphor very frequently when I'm coaching. I use lots of mixed questionable metaphors. Here's the one I'm going to share with you today that I don't want you to forget. The guys that you're the most attracted to, now this can go for deep psychological reasons, which we're not going to get into in a short podcast. If your father was an emotionally withholding man, if he left when you were young and you always had to win his love, if you have an anxious attachment style, obviously that's going to have serious downstream effects for how you choose men and recreate those relationships and try to win men over and think that his distance is normal and that fighting and breaking up is normal. And there's a whole bunch of things that we're not going to get into. Let's just say that as a dating and relationship coach, I'm interested in what you do in the future, not as focused on what got you here in the past. There are therapists for that. You should definitely employ one. But if we understand that attraction is not a choice, but we do have choices about how we proceed in our love life, that is empowering. So here's the metaphor. The guys you're the most attracted to that never work out, that are incompatible with you, are, in my terms, steak and ice cream. The two foods in the world that taste the best, but we know intellectually aren't good for you. Now again, I like me some steak and ice cream. I had some last night, but it's not something that you can do three meals a day, seven days a week for your entire life and expect to live past your 50s. It's just not doable. So what do we do in light of this? Well, we modulate our diet. We might say nothing tastes better than steak and ice cream. And simultaneously, I can't eat steak and ice cream and expect to lead a long, healthy life. So when I say that to women, they're like, oh, so you're telling me to wean off of steak and ice cream and the guys I'm attracted to are steak and ice cream. So that means I have to eat what? Like rice cakes and kale for the rest of my life. I don't want my husband to be rice cakes and kale. And so what they're doing is hearing something that I didn't say, because you can, and you already do. Don't eat steak and ice cream three meals a day. But are you eating rice cakes and kale three meals a day? No, you're not. You can find some balance as people do in life. Everything's about balance, right? So what does that look like? I don't know, it might be some chicken teriyaki and stir fried vegetables. It might be a really amazing omelet. It might be lean meats, leafy greens, low starch, low sugar, some alcohol, but not drinking too frequently. We know what healthy eating looks like, but there's still pleasure in it. There's still plenty of pleasure in it. You could be a foodie and still be healthy. So if that model works in diet and health, doesn't it stand to reason something like that would work in love? That between steak and ice cream and kale and rice cakes, that there's something that is good for you and tasty simultaneously? Why, yes, that's true. And that is the core of what we do in Love You. It's not that the chemistry isn't great. It's that chemistry doesn't predict compatibility. We dial down the chemistry a little bit. We dial down the taste a little bit. And now we could see things clearly and we could find compatibility. And compatibility is all about how the system works, how you feel when you're with him, how you feel when you're not with him, whether you could trust him, whether you could let down your guard, how well the system works in terms of communication, how you handle conflict, how you handle your timing together, how your values align. This is what real compatibility is. It has nothing to do with what's on the app. It has nothing to do with what you do on the first date or even how great your conversation is. Yes, you have to have good conversation. That's not the point, but great conversation doesn't mean you're compatible either. Oh my God, I've never felt so amazing with a guy. That doesn't tell the story of your future. Here's my anecdote that should be able to bring this home for you. I made all these dating mistakes when I was single. I went out with 300 people. And that's part of the origin story of me as a dating coach and of Love You. And one time in 2006, I had broken up with a girlfriend and I was a dating coach. I had two books out and I was still really struggling with my own love life and trying to dial in this message that I was able to teach, but I couldn't live. And I met a woman online on JDate and she was spectacular. She was my type, whatever that means. She was my type. She was a curvy brunette actress, big personality, really funny, really body and dirty, 
very cultured. We wrote these really amazing emails. This is pre-texting, really long emails, funny, flirty, big anticipation for the first date. I remember the first date. I remember where I took her out in Hollywood. We went bowling. <laughs> had a great night, came back to my place, made out for a little bit, and then she went home. And I had a moment where I said, oh my God, and not these words, this is my steak and ice cream. This is what I'm most attracted to. And I have a life, enough life experience to know I know how this story ends and it doesn't end well. I know I can get on this ride, but it's eventually going to end. It's eventually going to crash. We are a little bit too similar and I don't need to even go down that road. So that was literally the last date I went on with her. It was an amazing date and it was the last date I went on with her because I realized that I was just repeating my patterns again, going out with someone based on attraction again, not realizing that what I'm most attracted to and what's good for me are not exactly the same thing. And I was just, I had to stop. I had to step away from the table and stop. So I never went out with her again. Four months later, I met my wife, who I did not have that same magical chemistry with. I talked to her for five hours at a potluck dinner on a Sunday night. So I share that story with you to let you know that as your dating coach, I am always trying to be authentic, transparent, and try to not just talk the talk, but walk the walk. I know this doesn't come naturally, but it is a necessary step in getting into a healthy relationship. Are you attracted to the wrong people? Are you doing anything different to get a different result? Please, if you're watching on YouTube, comment in the section below. And if you find this idea intriguing and you wanna take it to the next level, apply to Love You, I'll take care of you. My name is Evan Mark Katz. Thanks for tuning into the Love You podcast. For more episodes like this on YouTube, click on the subscribe button and ring the bell. Choose all to ensure you get notified when new content comes out. If you're listening to the audio podcast, please share a positive review on Apple. More reviews equals more awareness of the Love You podcast and more love in the world. And if you want to have an easy relationship that makes you feel safe, heard, and understood, look for the link below. Go to www.evanmarkkatz.com and watch my free video about how to gain confidence, attract quality men, and fix your broken man picker once and for all. When you're done with that video, you could apply to Love You and join hundreds of other smart, strong, successful women from around the world in a coaching community where women like you actually get the unconditional love that you deserve. I'll see you there. Take care. Bye-bye.